Hello, first I'd like to thank GGB for having me here in the webinar series. And in this presentation, I will discuss about our plugin for OpenDetect and also a little bit about what is under developing by LTrace. Here we have the summary of this presentation. Since both inversion methods are based on the Bayesian approach for inverse problems, I will start discussing some basic concepts of it. And then I will present the theoretical basis of the Bayesian linear inversion plugin and show how it works on OpenDetect. After that, I will discuss a more general Bayesian inversion that includes the estimation of faces in a joint process using transition probability matrix, and also the preliminary results of an application of this method to a pre-salt carbonate reservoir, which was developed with Petrobras. At last, I will discuss about the wavelet estimation technique that we are developing for OpenDetect. So, in the Bayesian approach, the solution of the inverse problem is given by the posterior distribution, the probability of m given d. So, we want to obtain this distribution, and uh, m is the model parameter, d is the observer data, and this distribution is defined by the product of the prior and the likelihood. The likelihood is related to the observer data, and the prior is related to the prior knowledge about our model. The advantage of the Bayesian approach is that the solution is not given by a single model, but, but by a probability distribution, which is the most general solution because gives us information about the uncertainty of the estimations. So for the particular case of the Bayesian linear inversion, both the prior and the likelihood are assumed to be Gaussian, and the Ford model is linearized based on Aki-Hirschard's equation. M is the Lasky properties and D is the seismic data, or the angle stacks. And here we have the distributions where we can see the data and the background model. And the likelihood terms tends to maximize the posterior on a solution which minimizes the seismic errors. And on the other hand, the prior term tends to maximize the posterior on a solution which minimizes the error with the background. So the posterior distribution will be the best solution considering all the information we have. Besides, it's possible to include the spatial correlation in the prior covariance matrix. In this method, as in a usual inversion methodology, the background model, the, or the low frequency model, is assumed to be known, and therefore it should be defined carefully. So, considering the discussed statistical model, the posterior distribution can be analytically obtained, given by these equations. And the map solution, or the solution that maximizes the posterior distribution, is given by this last equation. Taking the advantages of GPU, our plugin computes the maximum a posterior solution of the inverse problem with a 3D spatial correlation in a stratigraphic grid. In this graph, we show the, how, how our plugin is very efficient method, uh, which demands less computational effort than other techniques. And when implemented in GPU, is more is even more efficient. It was possible to reduce eight times of the computational time required when running CPUs. So here we have a video of the the plugin running in OpenDetect. Uh, he's including the the side the, the angle stack and including its parameters. Now he's going to repeat the process for three angle stacks. Now he's uh, he defined the low frequency models and defining the range, so of a sub curve if you want. Uh, there are a possibility to use horizons and the or uh, inversion only in a random line. And now he's defining the standard deviation, the, the parameters of the inversion, the correlations and standard deviation of the prior. And now he's uh, setting the, the quality control interface in running. And then you can compare the inversion results with the well log and see all the correlations for all the wells or for each well. And now he's defining the, the standard deviation of the prior uh, with small values, so it's expected to have a result very uh, similar to the low-frequency model, 
oh, as you can see in this figure. And now uh, going back to the result, uh, you can also see the, the result in 3D, in the 3D view of the open detect, and compare the results with the while logs as well. Now, uh, now we are going to discuss uh, an improvement on the statistical model. Uh, so we include the faces in the prior model, defined as kappa, and the prior distribution of M is obtained by marginalizing the joint distribution over the faces kappa, uh, where this summation here is done over all the possible faces combinations along the size of the trace. So, and the prior of the faces is considered to be a first order Markov chain where the faces of a given position depends on only the first neighbors. And the probabilities are given by the transition matrix, which is a geological parameter of the inversion. Uh, the other prior term, M given kappa, or the last key properties given the faces, is assumed to be Gaussian with a mean and covariance that depends on the faces configuration. So, for a given facial sequence, the prior is the same of the Bayesian linear previously discussed. So, for a better understanding of the prior, we show a prior sampling. We have a facial realization depending on the transition matrix, and then we have different mean for each facial, color coded by facial in the other plots. And then we can compute the mean of the elastic properties given this facial realization by mixturing these means. So for this example, uh, each realization gives us a different mean, which interactively relates to a different low frequency model. And the full prior distribution accounts for all the possible facial configurations. So here we have three examples of, of possible facial configurations. So here we have the summary of the, all the, the, the entire statistical model. And here's the prior that we have discussed. And the likelihood uh, is assumed to be Gaussian. Uh, it's the same of the Bayesian linear inversion. And then the posterior distribution is a Gaussian mixture. And exactly how we discussed it in the Bayesian linear inversion, we can compute the posterior components analytically. But it's impossible to compute entirely because the number of the modes is huge. For example, uh, a seismic trace with 50 samples and three faces, the number of modes is going to be 10 power 25. So then uh, we need to use the smart algorithms to draw samples from it, such as the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. We have proposed the, the, the Gibbs sampling, which is a Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. The main input is the Gaussian prior components, and in each iteration of the algorithm, we sample a phase realization given the properties, and then we sample the, the, the properties given the phases and the seismic data. The sampling of the properties is performed by using two statistical methods. And in the end, we have an ensemble of multiple solutions drawn from the posterior, and they can use it for uncertainty quantification. Now, about the application to the, the pre-salt reservoir, here we have the basic geological information about the, the reservoir. Uh, below the Albion layer, below the Albion layer in blue, we have a big salt layer uh, in pink with variable thickness. And below the salt, we have the carbonate reservoir in light blue. The salt is mainly composed by highlight, but on the base of the salt is common to find a thin layer of unhydrate, which has completely different elastic properties of the highlight. So here we have the well logs, uh, where we can identify four phases, the highlight and the unhydrate. And we separate the carbonates as the as a low free, uh, low porosity carbonates and a high porosity carbonate. Uh, here we can see the Gaussian components for each phases, and here the well logs color, color coded by the phases. Now about the prior of the phases, the transition matrix 
is defined as the probability of each possible transition among the phases. And we always read the probability transition, transition matrix uh, from the phases on the line to the phases on the column. On the left, we have the vertical transition matrix from top to the bottom of the seismic trace. And on the right, we have the horizontal transition matrix. Given the geological knowledge we have from the field, we can include very important constraints on the phases model. So the first one is an, uh, a highlight layer is present on the top of the interval. So uh, uh, once it, it it goes out of the highlight, it never goes back again. So we define this as zeros. The second one is the unhydrated layer can only be present between the carbonate and the highlight. So then we, we define these zeros here. The third one is the transition probability from highlight to unhydrated is the same of the transition from highlight to carbonate. So here we have the same probability, 0.25, to go to one of the carbonates or to go to the unhydrated from the highlight. And the fourth, the carbonate phases are assumed to be highly heterogeneous in lateral direction. So we define their horizon transition probabilities between the carbonates to be the same. So we apply the method for an arbitrary line of the seismic data, including two wells. Here's the prior probability map we have defined it. We assume that the highlight is very likely to be found above the south base and below the south all the faces are equiprobable. And the transition, uh, the transition between this, uh, the, the south layer is smooth. So based on several realizations of p-velocity, s-velocity and density, we can compute the posterior mean of each properties. So here we have the results in comparison to the well logs in the same scholar scale, the p-velocity, the s-velocity, and density. And based on the several realization of the phases, we can compute the posterior statistics of each phases. In this figure, we have the probability of each phases for each position of the subsurface. We can see that un the unhydrated layer are, are very well defined, were very well defined. Here is just to compare the prior probability with the posterior probability. From the probabilities, we can compute the most likely phases model, which is this one in this figure, uh, where we can see that, that it's in accordance with the reference phases of the well. And again, it's important to highlight that the low frequency model was obtained during the phases classification. So therefore, the result of this methodology is less influenced by the wells, given the fact that the low frequency models are usually obtained by the interpolation of the well logs, which may be a problem for high heterogeneous reservoirs, such as the pre salt carbonate reservoirs. Now about the statistical mush trace wave estimation. So, in this approach, the initial wavelet is computed direct from the seismic data around the multiple wells. And the amplitude and phase spectrum is optimized by the interface using the LASK well logs. In this video, uh, it is an example of changing the, phasing, the, the phase of a wavelet. So this example here is an, uh, with an arbitrary data. So we have an, uh, a formal study to share for now. And the first window, we can see the well log and we, we have to define a radius to select how many seismic trace will be used to estimate the wavelength. In the center, we can visualize the traces and the synthetic and select the initial zero phase wavelength here. And the next step is to discard some of the traces based on the correlation cut parameter. To do so, we visualize these two maps. The first one is the shift map, which is the time shift with maximum cross correlation between the trace and the synthetic trace of the well. And the correlation map is the maximum correlation for the respective time shift. Based on that, we can select here to 
to discard the trace with the low correlations uh, shown in, in white here in these regions. Then we can statistically estimate the phase using all the selected traces in this map. Here we have the phase with maximum correlation between the trace and the synthetic. And in the second map, we have the correlation for the respective phase. It is possible to visualize some of the trace in the comparison to the synthetic, in comparison to the synthetic. And here we can see the histogram of the phase showing in the map. If we want to be more accurate, we can change again the correlation cut parameter here. And then we can clearly see which phase is more adequate to use. Then we can repeat the same process to estimate the scale factor of the wavelet. And then uh, having the scale factor, the initial wavelet, the phase, which, which has a best match with the synthetic, and the scale factor, we have the final wavelet. So here's the summary, the, the conclusions uh, about the Bayesian linear inversion. It's a very fast methodology for simultaneous inversion and it's available for open detect uh, about the Bayesian elastic facies inversion. The preliminary studies indicates that the joint facies is promising for a heterogeneous reservoir and the prior geology information can be included in the inversion workflow like, the, like we discussed in the transition matrices, uh, the prior probability and the stratigraphic grid. And about the study case, we want to include the clean and and clay bearing carbonate phases and do a, we want to make a formal comparison to other workflows and the, the open detect for this methodology the open detect plugin is under development and about the statistical multi-trace wavelet estimation uh, it allows estimating the phase and the scale factor using multiple traces and also the the plugin for open detect is under development so thank you very much for attending this webinar and uh, thank, you, thank you again GGB for having us here and any question you can send me an email here and thank you.